Hello everyone, I'm Watanabe from Keio University. My presentation title is an FPGA based on device reinforcement learning approach using online CKC learning. There are three contributions of ours in this work. The first is to propose an on device reinforcement learning approach for a resource limited FPGA. This algorithm is called OSM Network and it is designed for the pink set one board. The second is to propose a stabilization method for OSEM Q network. To suppress the outlier, we apply a combined method of spectral normalization and L2 regularization. The third is an evaluation using cartable video. The evaluation and execution time show that the proposed method is 89.40 times faster when the number of nodes in the hidden layer is 64. DQN is a typical method of deep reinforcement learning. In DQN, the value QST80 of taking action 80 in state ST as step T is predicted as Q theta 1 ST80 using the parameter theta 1 of the neural network. However, since theta 1 is training at every step, stable learning is changing. To deal with this problem, DQN uses a technique called fixed target network. This technique uses a separate neural network that is parameterized by theta2. For further stabilization, theta2 is fixed for a while and then synchronized with theta1. Therefore, the optimization target of DQN is as shown equation 1. Equation 1 regards the sum of the Q value when the optimal action is taken one step ahead of the optimization target. With this optimization target, the, the loss function in DQN can be ex expressed as in equation 2. In equation 2, the experience replay technique is used. This technique first towards the first experience in the buffer D. Then a mini budget is created from the random sample from D, and training is executed. Therefore, it is possible to acquire actions independent of time series. There are two main problems if we executed DQN on small edge devices. The first problem is that the gradient descent method is iterative, so convergence is slow. The second problem is that it requires a large amount of memory to store the experience. Therefore, in this paper, we use OSEN, which is an online sequential learning algorithm of neural networks. Since OSEN does not rely on buff propagation, it can complete a training phase only once for a given data. OSEM uses a three-layer neural network as shown in the figure. The first layer alpha is fixed with random weights, and only the layer beta is training at runtime. The training of OSEM is separated into two stages, initial learning and sequential learning. Initial learning is performed once when the data is identical to the number of nodes in the hidden layer for the first time, as shown in equation 3 in this slide. After the initial learning, sequential learning is performed based on equation 4 below. The batch size of sequential learning is 1, eliminating the need to calculate the inverse matrix, thus requiring less of computational resources and making it suitable for reinforcement learning on edge devices. This algorithm shows baseline OSEM Q network. It is almost identical to DKN, but because it uses OSEM as baseline, it introduces several new techniques to this baseline. In this study, we use this network structure as our baseline. It has four input nodes and one output node. This technique is used to make the training of OSEM simpler. The second method is cubally clipping. In DQN, the Hoover law function, as shown below, can be used to deal with outliers. However, OSEM cannot use any loss function other than the squared error, so a different approach is required. Therefore, we use cube value clipping to limit the output range of OSEM. That is, the cube value is limited to a range of minus 1 to 1 which is a typical value range for reinforcement learning. This technique will not produce the same effect as DQN, but it is expected to be similar to the DQN. As the third technique, we use the random update. This technique decides whether or not to perform sequential learning in OSEM based on a random probability. In DQN, 
experience is stored in a buffer, and data is obtained from it to reduce the dependency on time series. This technique is not suitable for execution on edge devices because it requires a large experience buffer. The random update technique is a solution to this problem. Specifically, it eliminates the replay buffer used in DQN. Please note that since this technique discards experience probabilistically, it can mitigate the time series dependency on the experience. Once again, the slide shows the baseline OSEMQ network. The baseline OSEMQ network is composed of three operations, initialize, determine, and update. The initialize operation initializes alpha and beta, and the determine operation acquires and executes actions. An update operation initial learning is performed when the number of data reaches the number of hidden layer nodes. After that, sequential learning is performed when new data comes. It uses the fixed target network technique, in which weight parameters are fixed worldwide, and it is synchronized to the latest one after a certain number of episodes have been passed. Here, let me mention the problem with the baseline OSEMQ network. That is, OSEM tends to output outliers for unknown states, and this value may hinder learning. These outliers may be generated even with slight changes in the input. Thus, it is essential to suppress such outliers in order to stabilize the OSEM Q network. In this work, we consider spectral regularization and spectral normalization in order to suppress the output values to a certain range of input data. The spectral norm is the rate of change when a vector is applied to a matrix. This is equal to the maximum singular value of the matrix, and the spectral norm of matrix A is sigma max A. The spectral norm of a neural network is represented as the product of all the layers' maximum singular values. Spectral normalization and spectral regularization are stabilization methods that consider the spectral norm. The former method adds the sum of the spectral norm of each layer to the loss function, and the effect can be adjusted by parameters. The latter method expressly guarantees that the spectral norm of the entire neural network is suppressed to less than 1 by dividing it by the product of the maximum singular values. We analyze whether this spectral legalization and spectral normalization are feasible to implement in OSEM in this work. For alpha, both regularization and normalization can be applied since alpha is fixed once initialized. When normalization is applied, the spectral norm of OSEM is restricted to less than or equal to sigma max beta. For beta, we consider that both spectral regulation and spectral normalization are challenging to apply. The reason for this is that beta is updated at each step by CKC learning, which requires the computation of costly singular values each time. As an alternative to the spectral regularization for beta, we use the L2 regularization. This is because the spectral regularization is included inside the L2 regularization, as shown in the equation in the slide. Using L2 regularization not only reduces the computational cost, but also has the advantage of being easy to implement. When adding L2 regularization, we only need to add the identity matrix multiplied by a constant during the initial learning, and it does not affect the sequential learning. Please note that the OSEM with L2 regulation is called the OSEM. This slide shows our OSEM Q network. It differs from the baseline OSEM Q network in two points. First, L2 regulation is used for the OSEM. Second, sigma max alpha is calculated in the initialized phase of the baseline OSEM Q network, and alpha is divided by the value. This figure shows the hardware implementation used in this work. In the PL part, only the prediction and sequential learning are executed, whereas the rest of the processing is done in the PS part. Therefore, the PL part does not start working until the initial learning is completed. When T equals N Judar, the PS part starts the initial learning of section 2C. The initial state of section 3 starts 
and the PS port sends all far and better to the PL port. Since the parameters are passed to the PL port, the subsequent determined part is also executed in the PL part. The Q value is computed for each action, and the X result is returned to the PS part. Based on the result, the PS part decides the action. Then, in the updated state of section 4C, both prediction and CKSU learning are executed. Therefore, as in section 4A, ST and all six actions are sent to the PL part, which calculate the Q value. The PS part takes the marks from the Q values, create the correct answer data, and sends it to the PL part. The PL part executes CKSU learning with a batch size of 1 based on the, the shift correct answer data. Therefore, the on-chip belongs towards alpha, beta, and intermediate results. The weight parameters of the two neural networks are stored in the belong, since we use the, the fixed target Q network technique. Since the alpha of this neural network is the same, only the two types of beta are stored. Based on this figure, we implemented our OS EMQ network on local sync devices. This slide shows the FPGA platform targeted in this work and the resource utilization based on the previous conceptual diagram. The platform used in this work is the same as the platform shown in the previous study. Also, the target FPGA devices is Xilinx XC7Z020-1CLZ400C. The operating frequency of the PL part is 100 MHz and the CPU is running at 650 MHz. The bottleneck in the implementation is the parameter size, which is maximum when LGDAR is 192. On the other hand, the utilization of other resources is not high, so that application-specific logic can be implemented. This experiment, called cut for Brazil, is evaluated with the task of making inverted pendulum stand as long as possible. The environment provides the car's position, speed, stick angle, and tip speed as states, as shown in the table in the center. There are two options to choose from left and right. We also give a reward of one if the agent can stand for more than 100 frames to complete the episode. The software part of this evaluation is implemented using Python, with DQ and using PyTorch, and EM and OSEM using NumPy. To see the benefits of the proposed regularization and normalization stabilization method, different designs are evaluated in this work. The first design is OSEM base which corresponds to base OSM Q network and is the simplest method in this work. The second design is OSM Lipschitz, which adds only spectral normalization layer alpha of OSM base. The third is OSM L2, which adds L2 regulation to layer beta of OSM base. The fourth is OSM L2 Lipschitz, which is a complete set of our proposed OSM Q network. The fifth is ELM, which performs the same algorithm as OSEM base using the ELM method without CKSU learning of OSEM. The sixth one is DQN, which is a typical deep reinforcement learning method. Like the other designs, DQN consists of three layers, and Adam is used as an optimizer. The batch size is one for all the designs except DQN. In DQN, the batch size is 32. These graphs show the learning curve when LTDR is 32, 64, 128, and 192, respectively. In this evaluation, since OSEM L2 Lipschitz and our FPGA design use the same algorithm, only the former is evaluated. Therefore, the six designs we evaluated are EAM, OSEM, OSEM L2, OSEM Lipschitz, OSEM L2 Lipschitz, and DQN. The x-axis of this graph shows the number of episodes, and the y-axis shows the how long the pendulum can stand. For each design, two types of lines are drawn in these graphs. The light line shows the result for each episode, and the dark line shows the moving average of the last 100 episodes. 
The top left graph shows the result when a dealer is 32. In this case, in addition to DQN, OSM L2 and OSM L2 lift sheets acquire acquisitions that keep the inverted pendulum inverted longer. As you can see, our proposed automation and realization methods show the good result. On the other hand, the baseline OSM showed the worst result as the number of episodes increased. This results indicate that baseline OSM Q network that uses only Q value creeping technique is not sufficient to stabilize the result, and that regression and normalization are necessary. OSM lift sheets, which combine spectral normalization and spectral regression technique, performs better than that uses spectral normalization only or spectral regularization only. This is because the two techniques work on both layer alpha and beta. The upper right graph shows the result when L dealer is 64. It shows a similar trend as when L dealer is 32. The two graphs below show the result when L dealer is 128. These results are also similar. With only DQN and OCM L2 lipsheets acquiring the correct actions. In summary, OCM L2 lipsheets can avoid overfitting and run correct actions thanks to the constraint on both layer alpha and beta. These graphs show the execution time required to complete the cut for basic task when LTLR is 32, 64, 128, and 192. In this evaluation, we do not evaluate design that failed to complete the task for 50,000 consecutive episodes or designed with low stability. These four graphs show the breakdown of the seven operation in the execution time. For non-FPGA OSEM based approaches, train init and train sec represented the initial learning and segregation learning respectively. Predict init and predict sec represent prediction after and after initial learning respectively. All these operations are executed in the PS part. In the FPGA, train init and predict init are corresponding to operations before the initial learning and they are executed in the PS part. After the initial learning, train sec and train predict sec are executed in the FPGA. In DQN, train DQN is the learning, and predict 1 and predict 32 are corresponding to the prediction when the batch size is 1 and 32 respectively. From these graphs, we can see that when OSM L2 is stable, FPGA, OSM L2 lift sheets, OSEM and DQN are faster in the order. For example, when LTR is 64, the non-DQN designs complete, complete the task by 89.40 times, 29.77 times, and 3.41 times faster than DQN, respectively. The reason for the high performance of OSEM-based design is that their learning is faster than that of DQN. Moreover, the FPGA runs three times faster than OSM L2 lift sheets when LTR is 64. Even though the algorithm is identical to OSM L2 lift sheets, because dedicated circuits can FCHC accelerate train sec and predict sec. Let me summarize this talk. First, we propose the OSM Q network as a lightweight reinforcement learning algorithm for edge devices that do not rely on buffer propagation method. For this algorithm, we propose four techniques. The first technique is a simplified output model. The second is Q-value clipping. The third is random update. And the fourth is a combination of spectral regulation for alpha and L2 regulation for beta. In particular, thanks to the fourth normalization and regulation, the output range of OSEM is limited below the maximum singular value of beta. In addition, it can be controlled by adjusting by parameter delta. Next, we design the OSEM Q network, including these techniques on the pink Z1 board by using an existing implementation of OSEM core. In the experiments, by using the card for Buzo task, our proposed OSM Q network was evaluated in terms of learning stability and execution time. The results show that the proposed OSM L2 lift sheets perform stable learning for all cases. 
when until there is 64, its FPGA implementation is 89.40 times faster than the original DQN.